Welcome to the As One Leadership Podcast. My name is Luke Williams and I'll be your host today. And we're in part two of a mini series we're doing at the moment um, called Art and Mission. And the particular focus of today's episode is talking about where art and mission intersect. And so we've got our guest back again today, our resident artist, Clinton um, Plowman. And so it's great to have you with us, Clint. Thank you. Good to be back. No worries. Well, today we're going to talk about how mission and art intersect. And you're a good person to talk to about that because you are a man of faith and I think you would agree we serve a very creative God. Yes. And so how do you see creativity in the person of God and how does that flow into our lives? Well, in the beginning, God created <laughs> yeah, the that's earth. True. <laughs> Quite a so, point, wasn't it? <laughs> so you must see that God is the ultimate creator and creation with purpose Um, and that comes down to who we are. So we are created in his image for a purpose, and that can take many different forms. Like we talked in the last podcast, um, creativity is only, you know, limited by, you know, what maybe you are as a person, but what uh, what limits you put on yourself. Mm, Your imagination. Um, Yeah, your imagination, um, and not necessarily a talent because I think people can, if they really wanted to do something, could uh, learn enough. I know there's football players that have, um, you know, some kind of skill level that got them to a different, you know, to a certain point, but hard work and determination and training gets them above and beyond. Yeah. And yep. that's the same in, in creativity as well. Mm. I love that when you think about it, in the beginning God created. So creativity is not something you thought, you know, a thousand years down the track, right. oh, maybe we should get creative. Yeah. From the very beginning, first verse of the Bible, yeah. in the beginning God created. And, you know, we often think of creation. We look out the window and we see trees and yeah. birds and, and even something like an elephant, for example. You look at an elephant, you go, oh, that's just an elephant. Right. But that came from the mind of God. Right. And so he thought, well, I'm going to create this big giant thing that yeah. weighs a couple of tons. It's going to have sort of funny skin on it. It's going to have a big long trunk. Yeah. And it's just so unique to look oh, yeah, at it. Down elephant. to the infinite detail of knowing your, every hair on your head. Yeah. That's amazing, isn't it? And so when you've got a creative God like that and he says, you know, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, uh, I guess it's natural that we're going to be yeah. creative and um, it's something worth exploring for each of us, I think. Sure. Yeah. And and I think when we do that, we see the beauty of God, don't we? Not only yeah. in his creation, yeah. but in what we can create as well. Yeah, like we also said, the nature speaks of, uh, the physical speaks of the spiritual. Yep. So we can find God yeah, anywhere. Absolutely. So in the last episode, we talked about some of the things you're passionate about. Mm-hmm. Um, so you've got, you know, this passion for art, but also for mission. Yeah. And so how do those things intersect in your life? It was, the again, who I am and who I wanted to be, who I feel like I was called to be. Um, it was very, a very natural progression. Um, I was always into art and drawing. Um, there's, you know, instances back in my life, you know, as a kid where I was drawing these amazing front-end loaders at kindergarten which stuck out on the wall against all the scribbles, you know, on the wall and, yep. and different things like that. So uh, I've had that abilities from, you know, way back when. Um, when I wanted to get into missions, you know, what was my place going to be in missions? Initially it was in the performing arts, doing street performing and performing in churches and schools and travelling, you know, Europe and the United States, um, doing that kind of stuff. Um but then it came back to my training was as a printer. I got a job in missions as a printer, which led to designing, which led to the you know, creative arts again, and kind of came around full circle to where I started to focus on the graphic design, um, the photography, the video, um, and then doing art as well. Mm. And all of that was used as a way to not only be creative, yeah. but to represent Christ yeah. in some of those spaces. Sure. Yeah. So one of the things that I think we share in common is that we have a real passion for our local community. Yes. We love to get our hands dirty. We love to meet yeah. people. We love to represent Christ in those spaces. And that's how I actually met you first up, I yeah. think, is through yeah. community involvement. Yeah. And I think you were a photographer at a couple of things that I was at. And um, we got sort of chatting and got to know each other a bit, which was really good. Yeah. And so 
I've seen you engage regularly in the local community yeah. and around various art projects, yeah. different kind of mediums and all that sort of stuff. But the arts world is very diverse and yeah. no doubt your yeah. worldview would probably <laughs> clash with people in the arts at different times. And so all how do time. you go – all the time, yeah, <laughs> no doubt. So how do you go about representing Jesus in those spaces when you're very different in terms of your worldview? It's not easy. Um, and as soon as you get overt about it, you'll get shut down. Um, it's just the way it is. Um, but I feel like if you can be genuine, be who you are, be loving, compassionate, all the things that as a Christian we're supposed to be mm. in the arts and you're passionate about it, you're not using it as a vehicle to try and save people, mm but it's generally a part of who you are and it's a part of your heart and what you're trying to portray and show people, people accept you for who you are. Mm. Yeah, so I think that's really good if people actually start to respect who you are. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes I think Christians have done it the other way around, like right. we jump on a soapbox and we yeah, start for sure. preaching to people yeah. and there's been times in history where that's been effective, yeah. probably less so these days. Yeah. And I think the weakness of that approach is that there is no relationship no, right. and they don't know you from a yeah. bar of soap. Mm -hmm. So when you go to the city and you see people doing that, yeah. you probably see more abuse than response right. a lot of the time yeah. um, because you're not coming from a relationship. Yeah. They don't know you. Mm -hmm. They haven't experienced you. Yep. Whereas when you're on the ground with people yep. involved in things that you're both passionate about, yep. um, as they come to respect you, you get those opportunities to yep. share more of your heart, who you are, and, and who Christ is. Yep. So, uh, yeah, Have you had sure. many opportunities where you've been able to talk about your faith in those places? Some. Yep. Um, it's about, yeah, like I said, just being who you are. And an issue will be raised and they'll say, Oh, Clinton, you probably know, know all about that. What do you think? Mm. Um, and that's, yeah, if I've got relationship with that person, they're willing to listen to me and um, respect what I have to say mm. um, because I respect them and who they are. Um, but in this digital age of social media, um, <laughs> it's not so easy to, to find that common ground. Mm. Um, and relationship, like you said, it's, uh, it's very short and sharp and, Mm. And gets nasty, but building those relationships, I think, is the key. Mm. And sometimes it's more of a slow burn, isn't it? It's a yeah. long-term investment in people's yeah. lives yeah. that create those opportunities to, yeah. to share yeah. more honestly about stuff. Um, we'll get to, in a moment, just uh, how you've used art and some of the meaning in your art yeah. that can convey truth and a message. But before we get there, you're gifted in lots of different areas, graphic design, yeah. photography, art, performing arts, all of that. Can you share what you love about each of those and how can each of them be used uniquely to glorify God? I think primarily over them all, um, it's it's seeing them as a gift from God, and and handling that gift as a, something precious, mm. and not to be squandered. Um, I've you know, the last few years have been difficult, and I've kind of you know let things go, but I'm I'm trying to get back on track with all that, mm. and really treating the gifts that I have as precious items, and honouring those gifts that have been given to me as gifts from God mm. and not digging a hole and putting it in the ground so that at the end of the end of my life I can dig that thing up and say, look, here it is again. Here's a talent but to, there. Yep. Um, you picked that one up. Yeah. <laughs> um, but really investing in it, investing in each one of those things. Yep. Um, graphic design is primarily very commercial. Um, I'm starting to get back into designing T-shirts and starting a new new business is going to launch soon. Awesome. Um, but that can be very analytical. Um, commercial commercial side of it, um, creativity that is um, reasonably analytical to start with and then, um, then a little bit of creativity towards the end. Um, so I enjoy that. I enjoy the planning. I enjoy writing it all out, studying, marketing, all those kind of little bits and pieces um, to create something that the client is going to like. Mm. Um, my side of art photography is the same thing. I've, there's the art side of photography, which I uh, might get inspired by somebody else's work or have an idea and a thought and I want to pursue that. I allow myself time to do that as well as the commercial side of things where if I'm going to shoot 
a campaign for somebody. It's got to be planned out. We even do like sketches and, and prelim ideas and all this kind of stuff and, and plan out, okay, we're going to do this here, that there, we're going to use this lighting for this, then we're going to move here and we're going to do, you know. So again, that's very planned and organized because we, can, we want to make the most of the time. Mm. Um, and then the creative side of things is just like, well, let's just go here and we'll just have a walk around and we'll see what takes us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's why I love about the city. I love the city. I love walking around the city. And a lot of times um, my favorite thing to do was to take a dancer Mm. and just walk around the city. Mm. And and we find things that we never thought we would find before, whether it's a, a piece of light coming from this direction or a little corner of an alleyway or you know, the big open vista of, you know, going down the Yarra River or Docklands or something like that. Mm. Um, just spending half a day just wandering around mm. um, and experimenting and, and having a play because yeah. you never know where it might lead. Yeah, so there's that sort of really well-planned and executed stuff and then there's the more spontaneous yeah. stuff and both of those things can have their advantages yeah. for yeah. sure. And I love what you're saying about, you know, acknowledging that all the talent and gifts we have are from God. Yeah. And so we want to maximize those and take them yeah. to the maximum potential yeah. so that we can glorify them with those. And and that's a discipline. It's yeah. not just, you know, flying by the seat of your pants. Yeah. It's actually saying, how do I actually keep developing this yeah. so that it can be used for mission yeah. and can be used to glorify God. Yeah. And so what, what it really excites you about art and mission coming together and I guess what also excites you about the latent potential we find within each within any church for mission so we talked about everyone's creative but not everyone realizes it or explores it and so what excites you about arts and mission coming together and activating people to be creative I think that's a a, it can be a kind of a a mind switch for some people because people say you say missions and you're thinking Africa poor people and things like that Mm. Um, the traditional idea of a missionary. Yep. But I was a missionary for 12 years and primarily my job was in a marketing and media department supporting um, our training facility. Mm-hmm. So I was, you know, flyers. It was a little bit before social media, so we won't talk <laughs> how old that gets. Um, yeah, flyers, mail-outs, posters, um, photography, team photography, photography for the people that came, you know, photography that gets sent out, you know, um, news releases, press releases, you know, all those kind of things. To that's That was the way I was. A missionary was supporting the, the greater, the, the organisation. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I think it's the way you look at mission too, isn't it? A lot of people yeah. see church has a mission. So the mission yeah. is, yes. you know, um, the mission department yeah. or the overseas missionaries. Yeah. But other people see it, missiologists say that, the mission has a church yeah. and that's a very different way of looking at it, that all of our life is mission. Yeah. And so we should be looking for ways to yeah. use creativity on that mission yeah. to reach people with the good news of Jesus. Yeah. One of the, one of my favorite things we used to do when we would travel into a new area on a missions team or in a different country was before we started ministry in a town, we'd, if there was a high place above that town or just an advantage point, we'd get together and we'd just intercede over that that, mm. that town. And part of the intercession that we used to do through Youth of the Mission was praying through the seven mind molders. Yeah. And it was always <laughs> turned to Clinton when it came to the arts and, and cultural side of things, yeah. um, arts and entertainment. Um, that was where my passion lay. And there was other people that had passions for the business or education or family or government. Mm. Um, But whenever we did that, I felt like a really stirring in my spirit that the arts and entertainment was my my area of what I wanted to pray and intercede and see changed in that particular town. Yeah. I think that's really good that you talked about all the different people with different gifts. and, Mm. And we talked in the last podcast about thinking about the arty stuff as yeah. that's the creative stuff. And I think it could transform your church. If you looked out over your congregation, um, what we traditionally do is we go, okay, creative person, creative person, muso, artist. Yeah. But instead yeah. of doing that, looking at the congregation saying they're all creative. Yeah. And yeah. so how do we activate yeah. all those people yeah. and the gifts God's given them? Mm-hmm. And like we said in the last episode, it could be, that person is going to paint yeah. in a service. That person is going to sing up on the platform, yeah. but that person might be a creative kids church teacher yeah. or it might be a creative business person in yeah. terms of putting our finances together yeah. and so yeah yeah well I, I can i can say 
um, one of the first things I noticed with the Follow Church was a well-designed website, re- very clear branding, mm-hmm. amazing photographs everywhere, um, then the video content and all that kind of stuff was, you know, really high-quality work. And, and that's how I think all those people that had input to that serve God through those st- uh, skills that they have. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a really great gift to have. And it's it's interesting that you're looking at a church from a website <laughs> and you're getting a bit of a picture of yeah. how much we kind of embrace creativity yeah. and how much we want to use, yeah. um, allow people to use their gifts yeah. for God's glory. So so that's encouraging to hear that that's what your experience was. So yeah. and Nathan's a big part of that, our yeah. producer, so a big tick to him as well. Um, I was chatting to you recently and you were talking about an art course you've done yeah. uh, in recent times and you were talking about how you had to produce a painting and we're going to get that up on the screen yeah. um, now, which is good, so you can check that out. It's a pretty cool painting. <laughs> um, what were the instructions you had to follow for the project? Because it was quite an interesting yeah. process. Um, during the first big lockdown, um, I had free time because I had nothing to do. Well, apart from being a at-home school teacher, for several children. Yep. Um, Which is a full-time job in that <laughs> lockdown, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and I find that that's not my skill set. No. Um, <laughs> Most parents say the same <laughs> thing, I think. Um, I, I, there's an artist that I was following and he was doing a 30-day course and we had to spend at least about an hour a day doing it and we'll put in little small groups, little critique groups um, that we had to, and then we had to by a certain time have the work done so that everyone could critique it. And then you couldn't move on until those things were done. So it was really, um, really a great fun thing to do. And the first thing we were asked to do is just have, sit down, no distractions, pad, um, a sketch pad and a pencil, and just have a 45 minute brain dump. Mm. Just whatever came into your mind, just start sketching and um, let it flow, let ideas come and, and all that kind of stuff. So, so this is more the did. inspirational kind of art you were talking yeah. about in the last yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I did that and the first thing that came into my mind was pathways everywhere. There's just roads and things that are all intertwined and going all over stuff. And then in front of that was the journeyman and the central character was trying to find his way in all those pathways, mm. all those distractions, all those things that are going on, um, trying to find his way out of the mess, I guess, out of the everything just going crazy. Um, there was one pathway and and how was he going to find that pathway out of, out of that? Yeah, so we've got the photo on the screen. So you've got little yeah. characters on his shoulder yeah, and yeah, yeah. different voices he's hearing. Yeah, and- so on one side you just hear the siren, which is all the safety and all the the um, the distractions of you know the flesh and all that kind of stuff that comes at trying to say don't go out there don't try and you know do you know find your way just stay with us and everything will be nice and pleasurable and then the other side is uh, like a a pig a hog kind of thing um, saying that you you know being really disgusting like you're never going to make it you just don't, don't even try you're not worth it, just stay where you are. Yep. And um, they're trying to pull him back, but he's got to focus on trying to find his path. Yeah, well, that's really interesting. And as you can see that artwork on the screen, I mean, yep. it's, a, it's a beautiful piece of art. It's quite impressive just as a piece of art, but with all the meaning in it, it's, it's quite powerful. Yeah. So how do you think this artwork speak truth to people who are visual learners in a way that they may not experience it if you just explain the same concept in words? My kind of idea of this is if I'm – coming from a genuine place and I feel like there's some spiritual inspiration in there given by God or, or what I'm going through at the time and I genuinely put that down on the canvas and an honest, you know, honest piece of work that I just feel inspired by, um, then I think God can use that in the way that he sees fit. Mm. Um that person might be going through something at a particular time and they'll pick up one little element. I like putting little, what we call them, Easter eggs in my paintings as well, just little interesting things that are like, oh, what's that for? And and that has meanings to me as well as if you ask me about them, they have deeper meanings for all the little elements that you might see in there. Um, but God can use that. 
God can use that in, in where that person's at. It's usually from you know, where that person's at in their particular life at that particular time. They'll pick up on something that that painting's um, portraying to them. Mm. Yeah, I love that. I think if 20 people looked at that painting and you asked them, what does it mean to you? You'd probably get 20 different answers sure. and, and some of them wouldn't even be what you designed it for in the first place. Right. And I love that. Well, no, but, but even for me, when I was looking at it again and just talking about it, I look back and say, hey, that's what I was going through at the time. What, what that painting is portraying to me right now is basically what I was going through at that time in that lockdown just felt like lost in a bunch of distraction, being distracted by certain things, but I needed to come back to a focus and get back on the journey. Mm. And without even planning that or thinking that that's what that painting was going to be about, I just started with a simple process mm. and it developed from there. Yeah. I just love the way God does that with truth. Like you'll read a, in a life group, for example, you'll go through a passage of scripture and yeah. you might've read that a hundred times yeah. and then someone will make a throwaway comment about it or they'll focus on one word and you'll yeah, be like, totally. did that just get added there? I've never yeah. seen that before. And all of a sudden that word or that verse will jump off of the page yeah. at you, I guess, based on what you're going yeah. through at the time in a way that never has before. Yeah. And it's the same with art. Yeah. Like, well, even the simple thing, like, um, I went to a music festival, I bought a t-shirt from a band and all it said was Jesus wept, full stop. Yep. And the amount of inspiration, concepts, and ideas from those two words, it, it kind of blows my mind mm -hmm. um, where people are at, what people think he was thinking, what was going on at the time. You know, all those things combined into those two simple little words and a myriad of inspiration can come from that. Mm, for sure. It's the shortest verse in the Bible, yeah. but it means so much, doesn't yeah. it? And different things for different yeah, people. Yeah, when you contextualize times. it, there was so much going on at the time. Mm. And, you know, was it compassion? Was it like a bit, of, was he a bit annoyed? You know, all those kind of things. What was, what was you know, into that one little scripture. Mm, and what does it say about Jesus and yeah. about God yeah. and what does it say for us and yeah. how we should be in, in our lives and all that sort of stuff is really powerful. So so I really love that. I love that piece of art. I think it has so much meaning. Thank you. And I think it will really connect with people in different ways and so take that in and uh -huh. it'll probably mean something for you that yeah. you didn't even plan for it to mean Clinton but that's the power of, of art and the way that God takes something and uses it yeah, uh, in sure. people's lives. And so I think about that from my perspective as a pastor. Yeah. So obviously a leader church and I guess one of my fears over the years has been that we do church the same all the time. A lot of church is just mm -hmm. the same old thing, two worship songs, a couple of announcements, a sermon, a close, yeah, yeah. that kind of thing. And I guess my fear is that when you do things the same all the time, you miss the same people every time. Right. Because uh, you might have, you will have yeah. people in your congregation that are visual learners. Mm -hmm. And I think what that piece of art showed us is that it connects with people in a yeah. way that saying it probably yeah. wouldn't. Yeah. And so... What do you think when it comes to, this is you giving advice to me now, this is good. <laughs> How can church services use the arts to be even more effective in communicating truth? Oh, there's so many little things that can be done. I, I, I think like um, the church has come a long way from um, my job back in the day was to swap around the transparencies of the of the songs that were being sung at the oh, time yeah, the and yeah, yeah. <laughs> the overhead projectors to having like full-blown powerpoint presentations and doing good powerpoint presentations and even while you know um somebody's speaking or during worship or things like that you know having really nice visuals just enhances everything that the church is trying to do um i've seen live painting in churches i've done live painting mm -hmm. during church services um I've, you know, dances, you know, all the flags, you know, all the different little things that you can incorporate. Yeah. Um, Dramas. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Skits. Um, that's all, you know. And then um, even uh, musical numbers, allowing you know, musical people to have a chance to, you know, sing a song that people can just sit and listen to and enjoy. Mm. Um, and, and, and as watching a painting, listening to somebody sing, you can get so much from um, what they're trying to say and, and just their, their talent. And I, I love um, live music. Yep. And so seeing people um, play um, and watch people painting is also <laughs> quite enjoyable for me. Yep. And so when you go to a service and stuff like that's happening, 
you might remember the truth of what they're communicating in a way that you wouldn't if that wasn't there. Yeah, yeah. And so I think that's worth considering for church pastors and yeah. leaders out there. What what mediums can you engage mm-hmm. to actually present the gospel in a way that people will yep. connect with it, yep. be inspired by it, and actually will remember yep. it? Um, so often when, you know, I've, I've done a few sermons where you have skits, you know, yep. not skits, but you have um, props yeah. Yeah. that you'll use yeah, yeah, to yeah. demonstrate yeah. something, and they tend to be the sermons people never forget <laughs> because the visual people go, oh, I remember that day when you did that. Yeah, you know? um, or, or it shocks them or yeah. Yeah, just, you know, gets them to think a different different way. Yep. So be creative. If you're yeah, running church right. services. So last question in this yes. episode is about um, youth. I know you, uh-huh. one, one another one of your yeah. passions is youth ministry. And um, how do we help young people discover their own creativity and empower them to use that for God? That's a good one. The arts is, is a hard, hard one because um, there's a lot of if – you're, if you're sports-oriented – um, there's lots of support for that and games and different things that you can do and lots of community, you know, things and things like that. But for the arts, there's not a lot. Um, it's a tough one. It's probably encouraging. Like if you see a young person that has a talent f- and wants to get into photography, come and take photos during our sermon. Mm. Can you do portraits of our uh, staff? We need them for the website. Can you, um, you know, shoot this event? We're going to do an event down the street or you know, Burke Park, can you come and take some photos because we need some updated photos. And it might be there's already a photographer there. They'll just come alongside me and, and um, help me with this. Or if you've seen someone that's interested in web development, maybe they can sit down with the web developer and say, you know, what's your ideas and mm-hmm. you've got some visuals or, you know, help us with that. So, yeah, it's, it's being an advocate, bringing them alongside, mentoring I think is a great way to do things. Mm. Um and that would be my reverse um, encouragement for young people to find those people that you can come alongside and uh, develop your skills. Yep. And if there's particular artists in the church, you know, um, I'd encourage them to, if there's, you know, find out if there's other young people that are interested in the arts and, and how to, you know, bring them along to meetings or say we're going to go to this gallery opening and there's, there's lots happening in the community that they can get involved in. Yeah, so I think being proactive and that's really important. Mm. So if you are a gifted artist or someone who's a bit further developed yeah. or more mature, yeah. it's looking at those young people and saying, oh, I see that in you. Yeah. But then if you're a young person, you're hoping to develop in that, yeah. you're looking at those experienced people and saying, I see that in you, yeah, yeah. and so you're going to them. And so I think as you do that, yeah. um, and I really love that idea of shadowing and yeah. um, apprenticing where people come along and yeah. they're watching you do it, yeah. you give them little tasks, but then as they develop, you give them more responsibility. Yeah, and sure. I think in churches, we've got to be really proactive with yeah. that sort of stuff. And that's yeah. what Jesus did yeah. with his disciples. Yeah. They came and watched him do yeah. ministry, he involved them, and then eventually yeah. he handed it over to them. So, And maybe it could be like even like mini galleries, like every church service have four or five easels out the front or where, where people are walking in, Have just have some simple easels and have some paintings that people have done maybe that week or some sketches or some, some um, quotes done in street art or just, you know, my mind starts racing when I start. I think we could talk more and more about that and have some creative stuff. But that can be simple little things that can mean so much to somebody to um, have their painting displayed and have people, you know, like it and enjoy it for what it is. Mm. Awesome. Well, that hopefully will spark some creative (laughs) ideas for people that are leading churches and uh, in in a way to get people engaged. And I think that's really important. So... Um, I hope you're enjoying this little mini-series so far about arts and mission. We're going to do the third episode soon, but thanks for joining us today. Uh, If you like this on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Uh, If you're listening to it on your favourite podcast provider, make sure you send a review. And and also, if you think this is going to be helpful for other people, please share the content so that it can bless people as well. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time on the As One Leadership Podcast.